Welcome back to Inside City Hall. The New York City Housing Authority is in need of $40 billion to get into a state of good repair. The chair of the authority proposed a plan over the summer to work toward that goal and finally fix the city's public housing developments. But the plan needs approval from state lawmakers who held a hearing today and seemed far from lending their support. Our Courtney Gross joins us now with some details. Good evening, Courtney. Good evening, Errol. What is astonishing about that $40 billion figure is Greg Russ, the head of the New York City Housing Authority, said that that figure actually grows by a billion dollars every single year. Now, he says he has a plan in order uh, to pay for all of those repairs, but clearly after today's hearing, it seems like not everyone is on board. The head of the New York City Housing Authority's new plan to save the struggling agency got its first hearing in front of state lawmakers. It didn't go that well. I don't trust the trust. I have some serious concerns about the trust and the voucher's proposal. This is not the model that I can say that I support wholeheartedly at this time. State lawmakers were skeptical, to say the least. The greatest risk, as we see it, is maintaining the status quo. NYCHA's leader attempted to sell it, arguing consequences could be disastrous if nothing is done. Failing systems, never-ending repair backlogs, and unacceptable conditions for NYCHA residents. These issues are only going to get worse if we do not act now. This summer, Russ proposed completely restructuring the authority by converting 110,000 units into Section 8 and transferring them to a new public entity, the Public Housing Preservation Trust. That trust would oversee and finance the rehabilitation of those units, badly in need of billions of dollars for repairs. NYCHA would still manage developments on a daily basis. This plan needs state and federal approval. There is now a bill in the state assembly, one which NYCHA officials say would protect tenants and public housing. But on Tuesday, not a single lawmaker voiced unwavering support for the idea. The housing committee has not made any decisions on whether to endorse the blueprint and has no plans for or against advancing Assembly Bill 11149. The Tenants Council's leader threw cold water on the idea. The Citywide Council of Presidents do not agree with the blueprint plan for change. A handful of labor leaders were supportive. There is no other plan unless the federal government just starts pouring money into public housing which may not happen. Clearly, as of this point, this is far from a done deal. We spoke to Russ after the hearing. We'll spend more time talking to folks about it. Um, if someone has a better set of ideas, if someone can generate as much money in the time that we're talking about, we'd be glad to chat with them. And Errol, the, I mean, the point I want to emphasize here is there, as of this point, there really is no other plan. A lot of the opponents uh, to this blueprint for change that NYCHA is calling it or saying, let's wait for the new administration. Let's wait to see what happens out of Washington when uh, President-elect Joe Biden comes in to see if potentially the federal government hands over a lot more money to the New York City Housing Authority. But given the need, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like that would ever necessarily meet the price tag that NYCHA needs, Errol. Yeah, you and I have watched uh, them say that about the last four presidents, Democrats and Republicans, and it just never seems to come about. Uh, well, let me ask you this, though. How would the trust work? Once the trust was set up, what would be the method of, uh, what, what kind of tools would be available to them to raise revenue? So they're either going to be able to access private financing or they're going to be issuing bonds. And the price tag for that, Errol, is, about $11 billion, Greg Russ thinks that he can raise uh, through this entity, essentially leveraging uh, different types of vouchers from the federal government that he thinks are basically more expensive and more able to leverage financing that way. Okay, and, uh, um, uh, and all of those members that you, uh, you, we heard saying that they're skeptical about it, they are the same ones that often contact you about stories about crumbling ceilings and elevators that are broken and other problems in these developments, right? Uh, that's the big thing is, I mean, this plan is big. It's, uh, it's different than anyone has ever really tried before. There's a similar plan that Greg Russ kind of enacted in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, but in that case, he wasn't creating a public entity. He was creating 
a nonprofit. So any change is obviously scary. And you're talking about hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers who live in public housing, and they're obviously scared that they're going to end up losing their apartments. But I think what NYCHA is trying to emphasize is that no matter what, this trust, this public benefit trust, is still a public entity and that actually within the legislation they'd been saying all summer long that when there was a bill enshrined in the bill was going to be the affordability and protections for tenants and you do read the legislation and that language is certainly in there. Okay. Thanks very much for that report, Courtney.